Today I'm going to be making a really fun cake for St. Patrick's Day. And we'll start off right away with the recipe. I'm going to get in my vegetable oil. That's good. To that I'll add in my granulated sugar. We'll grab our mixer. And I'm just going to mix this up a little bit. Okay, that's good. I will grab an egg. So that's one egg. Grab my mixer and we'll mix this in. And this is going to help with the creaming process. So I want to get this really mixed up. You can see as air is being incorporated into our mixture that it's turning a more pale color, a lighter color yellow. All right, that's good. Then I'll add in all of my milk. A little bit of vanilla. That's pure vanilla extract. And then I'll sift in our dry ingredients. So I'll add in my all-purpose flour, my baking powder, and my little bit of salt. We'll just sift that in there. And then just push the rest through with your fingers. Perfect. Grab my mixer one more time and we'll mix this up. And I do have my oven set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, that's perfect. And now we can put this into our baking tin. However, I am going to add a little bit of green food coloring, just a tiny bit. So I've got a little eyedropper here. And I'm just going to take some out of the bottle. This is a really good way to really control the amount. And I'm just going to put in you know, a drop. Then we'll just mix this up. There's two drops in there. I wanted a little bit more green than that. So you can do this on the fly so that you can actually see what you're doing to the batter. So just put in as much as you, you know, you need. If you want it a little bit greener, put a little bit more. If you don't want it green at all, totally omit this step. step. I think that looks good like that. So as soon as it's combined, that's it, and we are ready to fill our baking pan. For our next step, I have a little baking tin here. This is six inches in diameter by two inches high. And that is a Wilton tin, by the way. And I'm just gonna get all of my batter in there. And on the bottom, I put a little piece of parchment paper, just so that we can get our cake out really easily after it has baked. So we want to get all of this goodness into our baking tin. And that's perfect. I'm going to put this onto a little pizza tray here. And now I'm going to pop this into my oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. Alright, here's my beautiful cake, and I baked it for a total of 30 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, it's extremely hot. I'm going to let it sit for about 15 minutes, and then I'll unmold it. Alright, so I'm back. My cake has cooled down, and around 15 minutes after it came out of the oven, I grabbed my spatula, and I just went all the way around, really gently, and the cake just popped out really nicely because of that parchment paper that was on the bottom. And now I can just gently peel that right off. And there we have our beautiful cake. So let's look at our cake. So we've got the nice flat bottom. And you notice that the top is curved. 
And you can ice up your cake with the curve, but I like to take the top off. So I've got a serrated knife here, and I'm just going to estimate. I don't want to take too much off, but that's about right. And then I will just gently saw through my cake and get this portion off. And now you could take this portion here and turn that into little cake pops. Or you could just cut that into slices and uh, have it as a nice little treat. And there you can see our nice green going on. Really, really nice. So that's the next step. All right, and then I'll just cut right through this. And then we'll just gently lift that off because I do want to get a little bit of layer of icing on there as well. So I'm going to clean up now and then I'll be back. I thought today I would show a different way to ice a cake. I have a six inch cake ring here and this fits right over the cake. I'll just lift this up so you can see it. And what I want to do now is I want to trim my cake a little bit so that it fits a little bit better in here. I want to get some beautiful buttercream icing around the side of the ring. So when I put that on there, you can see right now, I won't be able to get a lot in between the cake and the ring. So I do want to have a little bit of area where I can do that. So I'm going to lift this off and we're just going to trim this down a little bit. So I'm just going to take off the little edges. And this does not have to be accurate. So I'm just going around. And again, all of these little pieces here, you can combine those with the top of the cake, mix them all together with a little bit of frosting, and you can make cake pops. Okay, and then we'll try our ring. And there, I'm happy with that. So let me just tilt this up a little bit so you can see it. And you can see now we're going to get a nice bit of frosting in there. Let me just hold this for a second, and that's so you can see. Perfect. At this point here, we are ready to ice. If you want to know how to make this icing, I will put a link to it in the description box below this video. This is a buttercream icing. So I'm going to get this into a piping bag, and then we're going to start. So I've put down a little piece of parchment paper on my turntable, and I have our first layer of cake, which is the bottom layer. I'm going to take my cake ring now and place that on here. And I have a little piece of acetate little piece of plastic here and I'm going to put this inside the ring. If you cannot find acetate then you can use pieces of parchment paper. I have pieces here cut out. I'll just show you how those fit in. And I made these earlier. So you can see you can line those in there like this as well. Okay, but for today, I'm just going to be using the plastic. So I'm going to get that nicely lined up. You want to make sure that your cake is centered. That looks good. I've got my buttercream icing ready to go. And now I'm just going to start icing all the way around the cake. So I'm going to get down. And this really, really makes this easy when you're using a piping bag. So I just want to squeeze, get right down in there. Get right against the sides and I do have a hole in my piping bag. That's why you're seeing that little strand. And then I'm just going to get a little bit in here. That's good. We'll grab our top layer of cake and just get that in there and then just give it a little push. I want the cake to be lower than the actual cake ring. And to test that out you can take a large spatula and just place it on top and then you can see any of the areas that are high. And then we'll just fill the rest of the ring with our beautiful buttercream. A little bit more icing. Let's get that all on there. 
Well, that's good. And then I'm just going to push all of that buttercream all over the place. And there's a little bit there. Let's try that again. That looks good. Perfect. And that looks awesome. So I have a little bit more buttercream here. I have added a little bit more food coloring just so it's a little bit darker. And what I've done here is I've taken a little metal skewer and I've marked off six areas where we're going to be doing our little rosettes. That's good. So you don't want them too big. That looks good like that. And there we go. Perfect. And as a last little addition, I'm going to use some little shamrocks that I made using a chocolate mold. We'll just grab our little shamrocks and I'm just going to get them on like that. I'm going to have them all pointing outward. You just want to give them a little push. I'll just get it on like that. Just a little push just to lock it in there. And that makes a nice little finishing touch. And if you want to see how I made these, I'll put a little video link below this video in the description box. There's not much to this video, it's only a few minutes long, but if you want to see how I made these, then you can check that out as well. So there we have it. So at this point right now, I want to chill this down a little bit in the fridge before we actually unmold it. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'll pop this in my fridge and then we'll come back in a little while and then we'll unmold it. So this is several hours later. I have chilled down my beautiful little cake and we are ready to unmold it or unring it. And I'm just going to grab the little metal ring and I'm just going to gently pull that up and because of that plastic on the outside this thing just slides right off and you see how clean that is on the inside and now you can see our nice little cake and then what I want to do is I'm going to find the edge of my plastic and now I'm just going to take the plastic like this and I'm just going to unmold it just gently pull that off. And there we have it. So there's our plastic. We'll just get rid of that. So let's just give this a little spin. And it's not perfect on the sides. You can see here there are a little few areas here where I could have pushed a little bit more of our frosting in there. But it's not bad. It gives it a nice little, you know, not a you know perfect look you might like that you might not but that looks pretty good like that and I like that and that's basically it for this cake so let's cut into our beautiful cake and I have rinsed off my knife with some hot water just so that we get a really nice slice and look at that Beautiful. And let's just zoom in a little bit. All right, I've just zoomed in a little bit. I am behind the camera, so my voice is going to sound a little different. I just wanted to show you this a little bit closer up. Our beautiful cake and our beautiful frosting. And our little candy melt shamrocks on the top. And we'll go over to our cake. I'll go around the front of the camera and we're going to try this out. I guess the only thing left to do is to try a piece. Ooh. I've had this cake many times so I know it's good. Mmm. Really, really good. Really nice icing and that cake 
really, really good as well. I hope you try this recipe out. You will enjoy this. You can make this for any occasion. Just change up the color. You can do anything you want. Do a nice pink. You can do an orange. You could do something different colors for Easter. Any time of the year. Oh, this is so good. Mm. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wish. That's it for today, and I'll see you next time. I wasn't going to film this step, but I just want to show you what I'm doing really quickly. I've taken a piece of parchment paper, and I have a cake ring here, which is the same size as our actual cake. And I'll just show you that. So put that on there. You can see that it's basically the same size. And what I'm going to do here is I have laid this thing down and I marked it off on my parchment paper. So I've got one line going along here. I just used a long ruler to do that. So I've got one line here. I placed it down like this and then I marked off the other side. So I've got a marking here, then I put it down here, and I took another marking here. So now I'm simply going to draw between the two lines. And now I'm just going to draw a line. Perfect. And now I'm going to cut this piece out. So I'm going to grab my scissors and I'll start cutting this out. So I'll whip through this and I'll come back in a second. And at this point you're kind of wondering, well, what am I going to be doing with this? Well, I'm going to show you in a second. Usually I use acetate to do this, but since you will not have that at home, this is the way to go. So I'm going to cut this out and I'll be back in a second. Perfect. So now we have a nice straight piece of parchment. And this here is going to go inside our little ring here.